Okay, this is Hangout number two from the lockdown. Uh, Hangout number 36 altogether. Um, I'm going to concentrate primarily on celebrity force allegations. Uh, if you've uh, if, if you're not a stranger to my um, hangouts, podcasts, whatever you want to call them, um, uh, if you've read some of my articles, you may be familiar with some of this stuff. But if you haven't, or even if you have, um, it can't hurt to repeat it. Uh, I'm covering here, I mean, I'm covering this because of this hysteria. Well, I mean, at the moment, Joe Biden, <laughs> creepy, sleepy, uh, crazy Uncle Joe, sleepy Joe, whatever you want to call him, uh, he's under a lot of pressure from a certifiable lunatic named Tyra Reid. There's a lot of rubbish um, on online about um, him being credibly accused, the same way Trump was credibly accused. No. Um, Biden has a, a, <coughs> a reputation. I believe you, you've probably seen him sniffing young girls' hair and stupid stuff like that. Um, so really, it's quite surprising he hasn't been me too before. Um, but uh, this woman Reed has zero credibility. I, I, I did actually mention this case on the last hangout, um, where the the woman. Um, who was championing Reed? Uh, Katie Halper. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't twig that she was actually from uh, Rolling Stone. <laughs> uh, Rolling Stone, of course, published that ludicrous um, uh, that, that uh, Jackie case. You'll find that on the timeline. Um, based uh, absolutely ludicrous case of a uh, a student who was supposed to have been gang raped on, on a bed of glass. Yeah, on the floor covered with glass, absolutely ludicrous. Um, now, as I said before, um, as I was saying, again, just because a story is implausible doesn't mean it's untrue. By the same token, just because it's plausible doesn't mean it is true. Uh, honest people can lie, which at which point they stop being honest. Honest people can lie under oath. Uh, scurrious people can tell the truth. So a great example of this which involved consensual sex was the Jeffrey Archer case. Archer had sex with a, a, a street prostitute named Monica Coughlin. Uh, she went She went to the press when she realised who she was. Uh, there was an entrapment and he sued the paper, sued the paper for libel and was awarded half a million dollars, half a million pounds on the damages. Uh, a decade later the truth came out and he ended up with a four year sentence. Um, I mean, in that case you had a lord of the land and his co-conspirators lying and you had a prostitute telling the truth uh, so it can happen but as, as, as the man said um, extraordinary claims demand extraordinary proof and another one that which is asserted without evidence can be dismissed without evidence so let, let's hear what Tara Reid had to say. Important for you to tell your story. You had come forward last year when others talked about um, uh, Senator Joe Biden, the former vice president, the presidential candidate, um, being sexually inappropriate with them. But you didn't go as far as to tell this story that happened in 1993. So why don't you tell us what happened? I actually tried to tell the story um, to some extent in 1993 um, in the sense that I wanted to talk about it, but I was too afraid. My mother had encouraged me to file a police report, and I did not, and I should have. Um, so I filed a sexual harassment um, claim or just I filled out a paper and then did not hear back. Can you give us the circumstances, how you ended up, or what was the day, how you ended up alone with Joe Biden? Explain what happened that day. Um, I was approached by my supervisor. She handed me a gym bag and said, hurry, Joe wants you, wants this, um, so get it to him. He's meet you down towards the Capitol. 
and I went down the stairs and I don't remember exactly where I was um, because there's connections between the Russell building and, and all of that and the corridors. But we were in a semi-private location. It wasn't a room. It wasn't the Russ, you know, the Russell office building. It was, I mean, in the Russ, his office, it was down in the corridors. And um, I handed him the gym bag. And then he, it was one, as I described, fluid moment he was talking to me and he said some things that I don't recall. And I was up against the wall and he, I remember the coldness of the wall and I remember his hands underneath my blouse and underneath my skirt and his fingers penetrating me as he was kissed, trying to kiss me and I was pulling away and he pulled back and he said, come on, man, I heard you liked me, but he was angry. It was like a tight voice. And he tended to smile when he was angry. And he isn't like the Uncle Joe, like everybody talks about now. He was younger. He was my dad's age at that time and very strong. And he looked insulted and angry. And I remember feeling like I had done something wrong when he said that statement. And then I was standing there when he said he was still near me. He said, pointed his finger and said, you're nothing to me. You're nothing. And he walked away. And I don't remember exactly where I went after. I think I went to the restroom to clean up, but I don't remember precisely. The next memory I have is sitting on the cold stairs in the Russell building back stairs where the big windows are. And I remember just my whole body shaking. And I remember knowing that, knowing that I had made him angry and that my career was probably over and I didn't comply. And I didn't comply when I was asked to serve drinks at a cocktail party for donors because apparently Joe Biden said, according to a legislative staffer, that I had pretty legs and he thought I was pretty and I should serve the drinks. And my supervisor had encouraged me to do so and I did not. Um, so, Sitting on those stairs, the reality hit me. The next thing I remember was that night and talking to my mom, and she was like, you need to file a police report. It's a sexual assault. And I didn't think of it as sexual assault, and I didn't really understand. And I was trying to just get over the shock of it because I looked up to him. He was supposed to be a champion of women. And I was so thrilled to be at that office and so honored. And it it shattered my life and changed the trajectory of my whole career in life. And I lost my job after I complained and I was fired. And, and how exactly did you complain, Tara? Uh, you filed a complaint of sexual harassment against Senator Biden at the time. Now, let's be clear. This First. is 1993, two years after he led the Senate Judiciary Committee. The woman interviewing her, Amy Goodman, is an outrageous liar. Um, to give a bit of credit, uh, her program and Goodman herself has attacked the Zionist raid for Palestine, but that's as far as I'll go. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure much of what she says about the Palestinian cause, I can believe. Um, but, uh, she, I mean, her Democracy Now! has had so many liars on there. She, she, she's... Oh, to give one, just one example, she lied grotesquely about the um, Sintoya Brown case, this this uh, little skank who murdered a man asleep in his bed and then claimed to have been a victim of sex slavery, traff sex trafficking. Um, notice that Reed, I mean, notice how lacrimosal she is. This is an incident that didn't happen 27 years ago. She, she said she tried to report it at the time. Did she? Hell. Uh, I, I didn't realise it was sexual assault. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, since then, uh, others, I mean, the, the, the people have claimed, including a woman who was interviewed by Goodman, uh, that um, this this incident was, uh, has been, was confirmed. No, no. Um, it, may, it may have been that well, obviously something happened in 1993. I think probably she was just sacked because she was useless. Um, or it may have been that she had a crush on Biden. Um, 
I mean, this is the this is the subject of this uh, this uh, hangout. Um, powerful men, pathetic women, and they, they don't come much more pathetic than Reed. What what I'm going to do now is play a very short clip of a woman who was raped. Um, not only was she raped, but she 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 was lucky to escape with her life. And the, the contrast is stark. Um, she, she has, I mean, she she's still affected by it. You know, she suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder, which is understandable. But I say the contrast is stark. This is something I've noticed. Empty vessels make most noise. It's always the case. Uh, you, you you can believe the genuine rape victims because a they report promptly or fairly promptly. They usually fight back and um, they get on with their lives do their best to put it behind them. Um, Reed has no credibility whatsoever. I happened to get off early. We were incredibly dead. But moments later, the single mom's carefree spirit would be filled with terror. He had a gun pointed at me. He told me to get in the car. Erin was forced to drive while the strange gunman sexually assaulted her. Before long, she parked in what she thought would be a safe spot. There's a lot of foot traffic that goes on in that area. Despite the businesses all around, the dark tinted windows made it impossible for anyone to see what was now happening in the back of her SUV. He um, told me to get undressed and I was crying, shaking uncontrollably. Erin's tears quickly dry up when her abductor sticks the gun in her mouth, aggressively demanding she shut up. What did you do then? He had me sit on top of his lap and he tried, tried to penetrate me, but he, he couldn't do it. That clip included a dramatization, of course. Um, the sicko who uh, kidnapped and raped that young woman uh, committed suicide uh, just after he was uh, just after he was convicted, but before he was sentenced. It's a common pattern I've noticed. Check out. I mean, that you'll find lots of testimonies from genuine rape victims on on YouTube. I mean, women who have been unambiguously raped, almost always by strangers, and. Um, it's it's almost as though they they rise above it. Um, most of them, they you know builds their character. <laughs> I'm, not I'm not recommending rape as a character building exercise, but it's you know that which does not destroy me makes me stronger. Um, <clears throat> I say Reed is a typical head case. She had one interaction uh, in her case, an imaginary one, uh, and it ruined her life. And, and listen to what she says. I mean. Uh, you're supposed to have digitally penetrated that. I, I mean, uh, to <clears throat> I mean, it, under those circumstances, that would be logistically very difficult. And what woman wouldn't call out or resist or something? Would Biden have been so supreme, so supremely confident or insane as to do it with other people around? Um, no, I mean, it, it's just ridiculous. Uh, she goes on to play the the victim. She, uh, you know, again, um, uh, she's had uh, people being trawled into her social media account. She's had one credible death threat. Did you report it, dear? Well, you're going to wait another 27 years to do so. Uh, you know, wel welcome to cyberspace. Anyone who has an internet presence has trolls and and, and stuff. Um, some of these idiots have actually tried to blame this on, uh, turn it around and claim that she's been. Uh, persecuted by Trump uh, and Trump supporters, but um, it's clear. I mean, there is a lot of hypocrisy here. I mean, even the, the ludicrous crystal ball has pointed out the hypocrisy that, uh, that the hysteria that was generated over, over Brett Kavanaugh over what is now clearly, clearly false allegations. Well, they, they, I didn't believe them anyway, but um, they, they weren't just. Um, there, there was some leeway for believing that uh, Blasey Ford was uh, being truthful but wrong uh, now that that's gone i mean it's just, it's just made it up a little girly voice um but um <coughs> she crystal ball and others have drawn attention to the hypocrisy but, uh, but I, I, it's, it's been claimed that the, the, the hypocrisy is they 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 believed uh blazy four but they don't believe reed 
even though Reed's allegation is more credible. <laughs> it's a bit like saying that Mormonism is, uh, is more credible than Scientology. <laughs> I mean, I mean um, no, um, uh, the, the hypocrisy is that none of these bitches really believed, or, or any of these leftists really believed that uh, the Blazy Ford allegations, uh, which I say were absolutely outrageous. Um, <coughs> Reed has gone on to call for Biden to withdraw. Uh, no, I mean, yeah, well, <laughs> Donald Trump is the last person who wanted to withdraw because uh, um, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, the guy's if he isn't senile, he's half senile, and it, it would be a, a tragedy if he, he actually became president. I mean, could, could you imagine him dealing with the Chinese or with, with Vladimir Putin? Or I mean. Well, I can imagine we're dealing with Chinese. We've taken backhanders from them for for, for years, but uh, <clears throat> no, this this really is pathetic. A couple more points. Um, she claims Biden said, to her, "Come on, man." I, I don't think Biden would have said, "Come on, man," um, to a woman. Certainly not in 1993. He has used that phrase re fairly recently in relation to China, but um, I can't see him addressing woman like that. The other thing is, uh, she's been singing his praises since at least 2017, perhaps before that. This uh, background here, Tara McCabe, that's her, retweeting. Um, now, the airheads like Barbara Ziv will tell you that this is part of coming to terms with, uh, that this is the way rape victims behave. No, no, no. This is the way head cases, <laughs> this is the way head cases behave. Uh, don't, don't forget, as far as these these, these idiots are con uh, concerned, there is no such thing as exculpatory evidence. No, you know, once a woman's made an allegation of rape, she's got to be telling the truth. If she's mistaken, she, she got the wrong victim, or she's she's having flashbacks or something. It's, it's, it's absolutely ludicrous, absolutely ludicrous. Right now, let's uh, move on to uh, a few other um, people. Um, why not Bill Clinton? Now, this is another. Clinton is another. Democrat who's said to have been uh, credibly accused. Um, no, uh, Clinton's most high-profile uh, accuser was Juanita Broderick. Um, I'll be finding on the timeline. Um, yeah, a lot of people have been taken in by this bitch, this this mad bitch, uh, <coughs> including Jason Impero. Um, Broderick appears to have first claimed to have been raped by Clinton in February 1999, um, <laughs> although the rape didn't occur in 1978. Um, at that time he was Attorney General of Arkansas. <laughs> um, now the, the, the point is she, she'd, she said nothing happened between them beforehand, uh, and what it was that at the time she made this claim, Clinton was being under a lot of pressure. There was, well, it, it wasn't to do with um, anything sexual. <coughs> he and Hillary, especially Hillary, had been involved in all sorts of shenanigans in, in Arkansas. Hillary's a horrible, she is, she is really a horrible human being, really horrible. Um, the, the contrast between the two is stark. Uh, I've, I've, uh, you'll find people say that Clinton oozes charisma. He, you know, he's, he's very clearly a people person. He, even his he, political enemies say he's the most charming of men. Uh, <laughs> Hillary has no charm at all. Um, although she's obviously she's obviously a faithful wife. Um, well, <laughs> well, she defended him anyway. But Broderick uh, accused first accused Clinton of rape in, in 1999, backdated to 1978, and who claims then that. Um, as we would read that there was cooperation. No, I mean, it's, it's easy to look back uh, and may, maybe even interview people and claim things were cooperated. Well, after Han Ratty was hanged, Paul Foote found half a dozen, well, I think it was 10 or 11 people in Rill who he claimed, testified that, that uh, Han Ratty was in Rill at the time of the A6 murder. And yet we know absolutely certainly that Han Ratty was guilty because... Um, his, his corpse was exhumed decades later and um, forensic evidence confirmed that 
he was the man who raped Valerie Story uh, and therefore murdered jo uh, uh, Michael Gregston. So, uh, <coughs> I mean, th 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 this is this is gaslighting. Um, people hear things and, and they, they they get confused and and they they backdate things and that. Um, now, Broadrick is. I, I'm not sure what exactly was Broadrick's fascination with um, Clinton, but uh, it may 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 be personal. But cer certainly, she 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 worked. At, she 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 contributed to the effort to the, the Democratic campaign, and she was actually actually thank I think she was thanked by Hillary at some point. And it's morphed into a rape allegation. Absolutely ludicrous. Um, <coughs> the reality is not so much Biden, but certainly Clinton. Well, Clinton is an alpha male, um, not quite as alpha as Trump. But women, uh, as um, Harvey Weinstein's lawyer, uh, Donald Otero, pointed out, women are attracted to powerful men. They don't care what they look like. Um, the, 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 the certain type of women, power groupies, are attracted to these men, um, and these men, when they get close to these women, um, they they're either stupid, give in and reap the whirlwind when it turns bad, or they're stupid, don't give in and reap the whirlwind <coughs> out of um, spite, um, rejection. Um, at, at this point I should quote Paul Gambaccini who was falsely accused of um, well Gambaccini is almost homosexual he was accused of accused by a, a bloke um, <coughs> he said that, that, that basically there are different rules for celebrities uh, how many people do you know how many people know you uh, you know if you're if you're a trader or something maybe a couple of hundred people know you but the celebrity is known by millions of people um, anyone who has an internet presence is known by m maybe, well, certainly thousands, maybe tens of hundreds of thousands. It's only some, some fairly ordinary people um, have internet channels which, um, you know, they have like half a million subscribers. Oh, I, and as I've said, as I've said before, YouTube has a billion subscri subscribers. Facebook has a billion. Okay, we're massive over that. But you have to ask yourself, are all these people sane? Are they all legal, decent, honest and truthful? Hmm? Do they all have your best interests at heart? Um, <coughs> people target celebrities uh, of both sexes. Um, I mean, Monica, um, um, Monica Seles, the tennis player, was stabbed by a, a lunatic uh, on, on, on the court. Um, John Lennon was murdered by a fan, a so-called fan. Um, <coughs> all sorts of, I mean, this is called sexism and misogyny by uh, feminists, but the reality is that female celebrities and, and powerful, powerful, powerful women get all sorts of abuse from both sexes, um, and men get false rape allegations. So let, let's, look, let's look at uh, another one. This is... Um, uh, Right, David Copperfield, who's another alpha male, <coughs> uh, celebrity magician. In 2007, he was accused by a woman named L L Lacey Cowell, who uh, um, Copperfield has a private island in the Bahamas, and Cowell claimed that he raped her. On, and it was a it was a big investigation. Uh, he set up a he set up a website uh, to to set the record straight. And it's called David Copperfield sets the record straight dot com. It should be pointed out that celebrities are not necessarily powerful men, um, and indeed politicians are not necessarily powerful, except within their own bailiwick. Uh, certainly, um, local politicians. Um, Maybe different in the United. Well, it is different in the United States, but in the UK and and lots of other countries. But politicians have limited, very limited powers. Um, but it's always this. We're told there's this perception of power and the power imbalance, 
and the, the falsely accused men are always portrayed as powerful. Um, now there are hallmarks of uh, false allegations against celebrities um, and, and, and politicians and, and businessmen. Um, the biggest one is, um, as, as I've said before, I made a video on this, the three um, D's of false rape allegations are drink, drugs and delay. Um, the Biden allegations delayed 27 years, <laughs> whatever, uh, <coughs> whatever was reported at the time, certainly wasn't any kind of sexual assault. Um, the allegations against um, Bill Clinton, uh, certainly the uh, Broderick allegations that were very delayed. Uh, the latest lunatic to accuse Donald Trump, uh, E. Jean Carroll, um, dated to the 90s. Uh, there's no reason for anyone to give any credence. Uh, Sylvester Sloan was accused a while back of, of raping a woman decades ago. There's absolutely no reason for anyone to give any credence to, to these sort of allegations. Um, <coughs> because by and large they're impossible to disprove. Uh, occasionally they are, when, when uh, the accuser is stupid enough to give specific details. Um, but uh, ge generally speaking like, they can't be disproved and, and why would a woman lie? <laughs> um, there are also more personal allegations. Um, the actor Johnny Depp was, was being, being accused fairly recently of, of domestic abuse, not sexual abuse. And it turns out that <laughs> the book may have been on the other foot and he's got the tapes to prove it. But um, the, the media is, is incredibly corrupt. Me, I mean, the, the media came under a lot of... Uh, for a lot of criticism for uh, hushing up the Tyra Reader, uh, trying to kill the Tyra Reader allegations, but why should they give it any credence at all? And by the same token, why should um, the allegations against, the ludicrous allegations against uh, Brett Kavanaugh be given uh, any, any credence? Why should these women accuse Trump? Yeah, we hear this, uh, he's been credibly accused, this Trump or some other politician or actors being credibly accused, uh, being accused by 10, 12, 15 women, and not one contemporaneous press report, certainly not uh, not one, um, not, not a, a medical report either. These um, these women are really beneath contempt. Uh, I'll leave you with um, one final uh, allegation. This is the, the French actor Gerard Dapadeau, who appears to have been uh, targeted by a, a certifiable lunatic, uh, as you'll see in this, um, you'll find this uh, clip on the timeline. There's no sound to it. Well, only only music, background music. Um, so so bear that in mind. Uh, these women are basically they're beneath contempt. Well, we haven't got into here any political motivations. I mean. The, the, the hashtag Me Too uh, allegations have clearly been used to target uh, conservative politicians, but uh, quite a few uh, Democrats have now been targeted as well by uh, loose cannon, demented females. So anyway, this is um, this is the latest uh, hangout from uh, the lockdown. Uh, please visit the International Full Strike Timeline. Uh, any donations are much appreciated, <laughs> few and far between. Also, if you have any cases, uh, you can send me. I'm particularly looking for cases in uh, um, non-English cases, cases from the, the, the non-English speaking world. Any from behind the former Iron Curtain, for example. Uh, anything um, in Portuguese or what language they speak in Chile. Um, well, whatever you know, Spanish. Uh, Portuguese, whatever. I think, I think it's pretty Spanish in Chile. Um, but um, any um, anything I haven't got on the timeline, um, I can't guarantee to include it, but uh, if it's uh, not in English, I'll certainly attempt to. So, um, anyway, this is um, 
hang out number 36